Today I have the pleasure of speaking with James Howard Tripp from Stage Zero Life Sciences. How are you today? I'm very well, thank you. And James, of course, you have one of the highest volume, most intriguing stock action stocks in the market presently. You just recently had a buy recommendations from Clara Securities. Can you tell us what you attribute all this attention to recently? 15 years of work. Um, it, it, it's one of those stories that uh, I think is people are focusing on, but for us, it's getting back to our roots. It's um, eventually being able to realize what we set out to do, which is you know the first first multi-panel um, gene expression test for early uh, early disease. We've been receiving a lot of updates here at Investor Intel from both your shareholders, interested parties, uh, and of course, our writers have been covering your nasal testing that you currently have for COVID-19 that has a 99% plus accuracy rate. Can you tell us a little bit more about this product line and, of course, you know, how you're getting it to market? Thank you. Yeah, you know, the, the, first and foremost, we're a cancer diagnostic company. And so when you deal with cancer, everything's got to be absolutely precise. So, you know, we don't vary. So you move into, into another line at the moment, which is testing for COVID. You have to bring the exact same rigor to it. And so we work off of the of Thermo Fisher equipment. Um, everything that we do is to ensure that it is as precise as possible. And so, yes, you're right. Um, 99, you know, nothing is ever 100% accurate. So that that's a little bit of a... Uh, 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 probably a push, but it is absolutely as accurate as can be. Um, in addition to that, we do antibody testing. Uh, we're providing variations on all of those. And again, but we run we run a two-step process. The thing with antibodies, there's all, all of the debate about how accurate they are. But if you run a two-step process um, and you verify what your first result is, you're reporting back again with 99% accuracy. It's my understanding that your COVID-19 testing is yet another way for our audience to understand that what Stage Zero is really focused on is cancer testing. And of course, we're all very interested on when this is going to get to market. Can you tell us a little bit about your timeline? Yes, we believe that we'll have it in the market by year end. Um, we're now completing the last of the validation. And, you know, the way to think about it, it's taken us 15 years to develop. It's it's all the diseases. If you think about what you've got to do in cancer, particularly if you're doing a multi-cancer panel, you've got to not only be able to find the cancer, you've got to be able to find it discreetly and say it actually is the cancer as opposed to any other disease as well. We're um, at this point, we seem to be the only group that actually can do that with that degree of accuracy. And so, it, it, you know, people go, well, how, how have you done this? Well, it's literally 15 years worth of work, and it's across multiple disease platforms. And so we're in the last stage right now, which is actually getting it ready for commercialization. And so it's the cap and clear process as we take it through internally. So, yep, we fully expect to be there by year end. And of course, anyone watching Stage Zero, like we are, sees how incredibly prolific the company is at achieving mandates and milestones regularly. I've seen over nine news releases this summer. I think it would probably be best if you tell us what news release is most interesting to you and give us some of the highlights. Yes, it's... Um you know, first of all, as, as we talked about, we should be, should be, in fact, fully believe we will be the first group to actually bring forward a commercial test that is a multi-panel cancer test off of a single sample of blood. Essentially, that is 10 discrete cancers off of a single sample of blood. Um, we've got a very strong female panel, which includes breast, ovarian, cervical, and endometrial, together with, uh, you know, the other group of cancers like colorectal, for example, and bladder. And um, that is just huge because women typically are underserved. So, so there's all of the excitement around that and then bringing it forward. I think the other thing is we operate in COVID, and we'll probably talk about this in a moment. Life is just completely different at this point. And if you aren't, if you aren't positioned correctly and you aren't responding correctly, then, then you, one, you may not make it through. But two, if you don't make it through, you're certainly not going to thrive. 
And so I think those are the catalysts behind us. We've not only been able to pivot very rapidly, it's generating revenue for us, it's bringing a whole new group of, um, of, of customers to the table, but they're also customers that can benefit from cancer. So you basically just lobbed it out for me. So I have to ask you, how has COVID-19 affected your team and your mandates? Yeah, well, you, you, you make decisions. As a management team, you make decisions. And, you, you, you know, it's, it's business. Nothing is ever cut and dried. Uh, but about two years ago, we looked at the marketplace. and We found it was incredibly difficult to play just within what I would call the ordinary ordinary. Um, continue to have to build and bear in mind that we're 99% we're, we're U.S. focused, where you just do tests, you take it through normal phys- the, the normal physician side and you bill all the insurers and you hope to get paid. So we knew we had to step outside of that model. And so we saw telehealth, the whole patient-directed aspect, really playing out strongly. And so two years ago, we took a fairly bold decision to begin to move our business very strongly to a telehealth platform and to move outside of regular billing. And along comes COVID. And so, you know, things just just coming through in the the last week here as we go with it is... um, before, before the advent of COVID, um, about 2% of, of medical consultations were being conducted through telehealth. Now, nearly 85% of medical interruption, interactions are being conducted through this. Um, Harvard, um, New York, um, the, the whole group Northwell, the whole group of hospitals back through that have said it's going to settle back. But, but recently, no one expects it to go back to less than 60%. We took two years to build the telehealth system. We have over 10,000 mobile phlebotomists that are contracted with us across the U.S. We have physician groups. Um, we're into urgent care. We're into large companies. We're part of MRSA VIP as we go through that. Um, we're testing everyone from a county to cities um, to, to um, companies that have 100 employees to companies that have 40,000 employees. And you back through that. We've just moved into the travel area. We couldn't do any of this if we hadn't been prepared. And yes, COVID took us all by surprise, but COVID actually has just accelerated things for us. James, what should we at Investor Intel, uh, interested parties and shareholders anticipate, say, in the next quarter or two? Um, we, it, it, it remains, above, above all, a cancer story. So we fully expect to have Aristotle cancer Um, in the marketplace by year end. We're putting together a set of very innovative um, arrangements with a series of cancer clinics um, as we bring this forward. That allows us to take all of this into the large employers. Um, It takes us into the reinsurers. Um, We can not only um, screen the patients with all of the benefits that run with that, we're hugely cost savings. Takes us into the large healthcare groups, takes us into additional companies. So it all plays out. And fueling all of this is, um, you know, a spike in revenue from COVID, which not only means we we stay alive, but actually means we generate additional revenue and additional partners. So it, it's just a huge springboard for us. So it's an exciting, it's an exciting six to nine months ahead of us. James, as always, it's such a pleasure to get an update from you. We know how incredibly busy you must be, and we're all cheering for you. Thank you for joining us today. You're very welcome.